Hello everybody, I'm Hamster Resident Wargamer here at Dwarven Forge. Today I'm going to show you what makes Starforge terrain great for wargaming. This is a modular system that can be rearranged into many different features, breaks down easily for storage and transportation. There's plenty of sets that you can use to supplement your existing wargames terrain. And today we're going to go through some popular games, show you some sweet setups. So let's get right into the action. Now here we have a kill team battlefield using the starter exterior bundle on top of an official kill team board. And I'm going to start with these catwalks and pipes here in the back. What I love about these pieces is that as soon as you start adding stairs and curves, you can create a really large footprint with a small number of pieces. There's a lot of ways to add different levels of verticality using the different extensions and the like. And you can create a lot of cool, unique negative space fillers with this set. Now moving to the center here, we've built this strong central fortification. This goes up two inches each, so you can have vantage points and even punishing vantage points. I like to use these ladders to indicate a scalable feature. You can, of course, climb up here. Now these barricades are just biscuited in here, so you have plenty of these to scatter and fill out negative space or create a fortified position on top of your bunker. Here you can use your catwalks and pipes to extend the footprint of other features by biscuiting them in, and this is all playable. I'm going to scoot over to these modules, one of my favorite pieces. This small piece here can be used as scatter, as cover. It can even fill sections of your buildings, like this up here. And in combination with your barricades, you can create different positions of heavy and light cover. Now moving to the front here, this feature is actually three different accessories. So you can pull this apart to dress different parts of your battlefields or your fortifications or create an entirely new feature. And I think this would even be a cool looking thematic objective token as well. Another great feature of the pipes is we have designed them to be playable with your miniatures. So they will stand up. This is a 32 millimeter base. So this is a heroic scale miniature that is standing perfectly stable on your catwalks. So for this board, we made this two-story fortified position right in the center, kind of a King of the Hill style scenario. We're going to go on to our next build where we spread some of this out and create a whole new arrangement using this exact same set. So here we have the same starter exterior bundle built on a two by two. We've spread out that two-story feature into two one-stories. We imagine this for something like Stargrave, your narrative skirmish scenario. We got a ton of different miniatures here for any kind of skirmish game that you like. So back here, we have a lot of fun accessories that you can interact with. Maybe if someone controls this console as an objective, there's a special rule where the gun can fire on your enemies. This could be a great power position here. Now, what I love about the pipes and catwalks is you can not only create sprawling catwalks, but you can also create platforms and lots of playable space. So we put the mini modules here as sort of a supply cache, maybe another objective on this ice planet. They're mining a specific resource that is held in something like this. So this is another vertical playable platform made with just the catwalks. Another example here of the notches and the ramps, letting your miniatures be perfectly playable as they move down the piece. Up in front here, these barricades, of course, can be another freestanding piece of cover or used to fortify your buildings like so back here. Here's one of my favorite accessory combinations making an appearance once again to create a piece of cover, perhaps a thematic objective. I really like how this pipe goes into the cracked ice part of the terrain tray art. Could be some sort of narrative mechanic there as well. And here we have another great example of the pipes and catwalks extending your bunker and creating more playable space around it. And on these stairs, if you have miniatures with a smaller base, they are designed to be able to notch right into the stairs as you're moving up to engage your foe. So as you can see, there's a lot of fun accessories to create some fun narrative interaction on your objectives or power positions in a sort of campaign focused game, a narrative focused skirmish game, and this dense two by two creating a lot of fun tactical positions. So now you've seen the starter exterior bundle, let's move up to the medium sized bundle, get it on a slightly larger board and see what it looks like in another skirmish game. So here we're using the medium exterior bundle on a 3x3 to create a build for Star Wars Shatterpoint. I love the classic red sand kind of Geonosis look of the mat we're using here. If we go to the back corner, look just how creative you can get with the shape of the pipes and the catwalks. 
Once you get some pylons in the mix, you can even finish them off with different accessories and get varying heights for your pipes. In the back here, we have a feature with multiple levels of elevation using just the pipes and catwalks pieces. I love this feature a lot. In this bundle, we have plenty of barricades to either fortify your bunkers or hit areas of opportunity to hunker and take cover and that sort of thing. And on this objective, we have plenty of accessories for you to dress areas of interest, like with that console. This is a great use of the barricade, kind of finishing this floor piece as a platform in an interesting way. And then up here, if you have an accessory wall, you can do this double ladder trick to create those ingress points where, of course, you can finish a move near the ladder and climb all the way up. So that's a great use of those ladder accessories and those core walls. And I think this stuff works great with your existing shatter point terrain. We have a piece here. And you can see, even though the elevation is a little bit different, it creates great variance here using your Star Forge pieces. A lot of different silhouettes here to break this up. And as you can see, you can create a lot of features reminiscent of this stuff designed for your games of Star Wars Shatter Point. They even have a little console. Look at that. As you can see, if you have an existing collection of the official Star Wars terrain, you can start small with your Star Forged, get a pack of pipes, a core pack, a pack of barricades, and create some really dynamic battlefields for your Star Wars games. And now for our next build, we're going to take this same bundle and do it on an even bigger board for Warhammer 40k. So this is once again the medium exterior bundle on a 4x4. We're using it for Warhammer. This is the Leviathan box, so it's about a thousand points. So you can imagine if you have twice as many miniatures, you could easily spread this out to that 60x44 and have plenty of space to navigate, but still have some interesting tactical decisions as far as the terrain. And remember, most of these pieces are biscuited together, so you can pre-assemble your favorite shapes, your favorite features, and easily start stacking them and rearranging them. Up here is another great example of the catwalks and pipes pieces extending the footprint of your walls and fortifications. The stair creates a nice little piece of corner cover. And remember, each of these is two inches, so you can stack these three high, maybe create some plunging fire opportunities. And the mini module here is kind of just dressing this catwalk shape. You can create more playable space there, extend the footprint of a building edge, another piece of corner cover. And up front we have these pipes that are playable. Your miniatures can stand on them, so in Warhammer you can decide with your opponent if those are playable. Um, and remember, the pipes are just two catwalk pieces on top of each other, so if you want catwalks instead, you just pull them apart and you have twice as many. And our pipe system is designed to be an inch wide, so you can of course charge your opponent and fight over the top of it in your games of Warhammer. So this bundle can gets you great coverage for your army scale game. It's really easy to get the pipes on their own, the barricades on their own if you want a little more density, or you just want a sampling to supplement your game's workshop kits or your other wargaming kits. And remember, you can get this painted or unpainted. So if you want to do a custom scheme, have at it with your hobby, or if you just want it to be table ready, we have that for you as well. I love this set because it gives you plenty of core pieces to make multiple interesting features that can break line of sight. Maybe some of them are impassable, maybe you have to climb up some of them to get to power positions, or you can make larger, even bulkier, chunkier features for your war games. We've got one last fun bonus build. This one is just a free build. It doesn't use specific sets. This was a fun challenge to see how we could combine Starforged with our Hellscape terrain to make a Mustafar-style battlefield. We used the core pieces to make a few multi-level buildings where you could advance in two-inch increments or use jump or climb move actions to go all the way to the top. We also made a raised defended platform in the back that you can only get to by fighting across a long walkway, unless you have a jump ability. We used core walls on the side so it completely blocks off line of sight. We used nothing but the catwalks and barricades in the center so we'd have a melee battlefield with partial cover from ranged units on the outside. Controlling this zone would let you set up ranged units to rain fire on the rest of the battlefield. Since Shatterpoint has so many rules and abilities for repositioning yourself and enemies, we use the catwalks and pipes to create narrow passages over lava, so if you're not careful, you could get shoved into it and homebrew some damage rules for it. We also used just a couple of pylon and catwalk pieces to make a 4-inch tall sniper's nest, a super powerful position to put a unit like Gar Saxon in that gets even more valuable if it's an active objective. Overall, it was a really fun compatibility build to throw together, and we really want to get some games on it. 
Now that's just some of the possibilities of wargaming with your Starforged terrain. If you have any more questions, please join us in our great community on our Discord and our forums. If you need more information, check out our Starforged YouTube playlist, and I'll see you on the battlefield. To war!